Just to see you. 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 Allow me to see you. Just to see you. Open my eyes to see you. Just to see you. Give me the perception about you, oh God. Just to see you. To see you. Just to see you. Give me the perception about you. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Take away every vial that covering my sight to not to see. Allow me to see you. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Just to see. Amen. 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 Can we give a hand to the Lord? Yeah. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a pleasure to me and an honor to share the word of God with you this morning. Amen. I'm so excited yes. and I know you are. Yes. Amen. The heaven is open yes. and we need to get ready for him. That's right. The heaven is about to release again what we need and the instruction of how we're going to work. So this morning, get yourself ready. Amen. I bring a greeting from the church back home. Amen. And my wife. Amen. This, is, this is what she said this morning. Tell my lovely people that thank you for taking care of my husband, my husband for over two years. And I told her that I will give this message to them. Yes. And she sent her love to you. Amen. 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 My greeting to our apostle, the father of the house, wherever they are, we are praying for them. Yes. And we know that God uh, that called them to an, a new dimension of yes. ministry Amen. will keep them and give them strength to finish what they, Amen. That's right. Amen. they have been ordained to do. Amen. Amen. And make sure that every single day that you wake up, pray for them. Yes. They need our prayer this particular time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Amen. Let me see you. <laughs> <laughs> Until you see him, something will change in your life. Until you see him, a new calibration will start in your life. Yes. Until you see him, you will become somebody different. Yes. The result of the perception of God is the ability to die for self and live in the will of God, yes. even in the difficult time. Yes. 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 When you see Joshua chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says Joshua arose early in the morning and gave this instruction to the leaders. He said, carry the ark of God and tell the children of Israel when they see the ark of God moving, tell them to break the camp and follow. When they see the ark of God moving. Yes. Tell them to break the camp and move and follow. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And this instruction was given to everybody, every tribe. The ability to see the movement of the ark of God will activate your movement in the spirit and to move to the new dimension that God deserved for you. If you cannot see, 
you still be in the same place. In another word, every single person, every man, has to learn how to see God movement for his own family. We can never live and survive in this season without the proximity of the presence of God in our life. It is impossible. We survive through the proximity of the presence of God in this season. Why? Because our perception of the movement of God guarantees our future. When you track Israel movement in the desert, once they left Egypt, they have only one navigation system, the cloud of God. They move according to the frequencies of the cloud of God. Whenever the cloud is going with a high speed, they have to move with the same frequencies. There's no way you can move under that cloud without, you know, abandon your way, your own way of moving. In another way, God was teaching them to know that we are in the season where you cannot put a demand of God to use you the way you are. Yeah. No. You have to recalibrate yourself according to the movement in the spirit, the frequencies that is moving with God. There's no way you can just, you know, God, I know, I know that you know that I'm a sick person in the spirit, but I'm trying to work with you with my own will. God will say, no, deny. Yeah. Even if you have one leg that is not working, when the cloud is moving with high speed, you have to move according to. Because remember, the movement of God is educating our life. The movement of God is educating our life. We don't educate ourselves, we are in the desert. If the cloud leaves you, you will die. Yeah. I'm not ready to die in the wilderness. The reason why I left Egypt is to reach Canaan. Yeah. The reason why I left the world is to reach heaven. So I'm not ready to die in the wilderness. Let me see. Yes. Let me see you. That is, only, that is my only guarantee. When I can see you, I can leave. If I can see you, I will leave. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are living in the season where the blindness will become your greatest enemies. Yeah. Blindness is the lack of understanding of the right season. Blindness is the ignorance position. And you have no clue about what God is doing. And you are totally frustrated. And the frustration is the result of the lack of the proximity of God in our life. And at the end, you end up with depression. Why? Because something is missing. It's just like a car with that engine oil. <laughs> yes, God. A 
car with that engine oil. John, the apostle of Jesus, in the book of Revelation chapter 1, he was invited in the spiritual realms where they begin to introduce him what is about to happen in the next future years. He said, among the seven stars, I saw, I heard a voice when I turned to see. I saw a, a man with a white garment as a snow. When he turned to see him, the appearance of Jesus, he said, I collapsed. Which means that he died. He didn't say, oh, Jesus, I know you. No. He died. When you see him, you will die. When you see him, the flesh will leave you alone. When you see him, your spirit will raise up and follow him. When you see him, you become somebody new. A new calibration will start in your life. Different things. A new perception. Your agreement and everything will change. Your engagement will change. Why? Because you see him. Because you see him. That's why when he say, let me see you, he means something greater to you. I want to see you to live. I want to see you for my flesh to die for myself. Die for myself. I want to see you to become a new person. I want to see you to see the movement of your cloud. Movement of your, 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 your direction. I want to see you to be able to synchronize my life with your movement. I want to see you to be able to be obedient to your voice. I want to see you to be a better person for you, God. I want to see you. But if you cannot see him, you would become a man with that navigation. You will don't know your direction. You will not even know where you are going spiritually totally blind without any hope. And at the end, you abandon everything and say, I'm tired about worshiping God. God is still God. It's you that lose the frequency of God. Amen. Amen. Why not you raise up your, your hands towards him this morning again and say, Father, let me to see you. Open my eyes, let me see you. Open my eyes, let me see you. Give me the power of a greater sight. Let me discover you. Help me to die for myself. And make my life new. Recalibrate my life. Change my perception. And help me to walk according to your frequencies. I abandon my life to you. Can you speak to him in the spirit? Marada bora 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 shantala bora 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 be merindo bora 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 shekeri be 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 sinta bora 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 sinta. Thank you, Father, for new thing that you are doing. I bless you and I honor you. I exalt you for opening our eyes. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Well, that was my introduction. Yesterday, when I, while I was meditating and preparing the message, um, in front of my computer, I was just putting some PowerPoint together. 
Um, then I just had a voice to call Ada Ellie, just to talk a little bit with him. Then I called him according to her affair. And uh, we just share a little bit. And before we hung up, he just said, can I just pray for you? And I said, yes, please. And he did. He prayed for me. After that, I went back to my duty to prepare my message. Then I discovered that there is a denial of access in the spirit, which means that the flow of the spirit just cut off. And I asked myself, we just pray, but why yeah, yeah. suddenly the frequencies, I can't find the frequencies anymore. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I said, oh, is this Pastor Henry took my frequencies away. <laughs> Let me call him back. Maybe he can provide a new connection for me. <laughs> So I'm just struggling to get back the connection, but then I heard your voice say, shut down your computer and shut down your PowerPoint. So, but I say, I want to do PowerPoint. It says, shut down your computer and shut down everything. So I shut everything down, then I put my music and I was listening. Bam! I got back the frequencies. And the Lord said, I want you to move, speak prophetically tomorrow. So I don't want you to put anything on the board. Just talk. So wow. Then when I started following that instruction, the flow came back again. And I started putting notes on my paper. He said, just take it like that. And speak the way you receive it. So no PowerPoint today. We just want to talk. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Amen. Okay. So, by the way, we're going to be talking about preparing for the harvest. Enhance the sanctuary. Preparing for the harvest enhanced the sanctuary. We are living in the season just after the, the transition, God began to speak and giving us the direction about how ACC will work this end time. And it is our duty to get connected with the frequencies of God and know what God wants to do right now on the earth, and especially in our region. And we are living in a time of great harvest. And God wants us to prepare for the harvest. And God wants us to be part of the team that will work towards the harvest. We don't orchestrate the harvest. God does. But it's our responsibility to get ourselves ready to cooperate with God and engage in the mission. Therefore, that requires a greater preparation. In another word, we need to get ourselves ready to welcome and to take care of the harvest of God. Amen. We have to. And what God is waiting for to activate the harvest right now is the readiness and the preparation of the church. If we are not prepared, we can miss the harvest. Yes. Yes. Remember what happened to Peter. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7. Five, four to seven. 
You can put that on board. That one, the spirit didn't tell, her, tell me about that. So you can put a scripture on board. For the people who are going to see the scripture. Whoever have the microphone, I wanted to read it from the congregation. Five, four. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, <clears throat> launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, <clears throat> and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Hmm. <clears throat> Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. This is the first time that Jesus appeared and revealed himself to Peter. For the first time for him to know Christ, who he is. He was struggling in his business, trying to get a fish and sell and develop his business. And the whole night, he tried to find something, get something. He tried to, you know, just get out of that place with something. He tries best. Nothing happened for him. Nothing worked for him. Nothing working for him. A man with more than 35 years of experience of fishing. But that night, he went blind. He used his experience to succeed in life. But he couldn't. And he was even tired about life. And he was ready and to quit and go home. When Jesus met him and he said, can I use your boat? Can I use your space? And he was touched and he said, yes, you can. He stepped away from his frustration of not being able to succeed in life. He didn't keep himself in that conception and say, because I could not succeed doing what I was supposed to do, then I will allow that frustration To change my nature. But he allowed Christ to step into his life. He allowed Christ to speak to him and say, can I use your space? Because he opened his gate to Christ to use his space. Something began to happen that he don't even understand. How Christ succeeded to locate him. That's how Christ succeeded to locate you. When we are at the end of our effort. Use my space. Use my space. When Christ used his space, after he, he, he taught the people, after he revealed the kingdom to the people, and he said, now you, Peter, can you just move a little bit your boat front and go and, 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 um, and lay down the net? He said, Master, did you know how many years have I been doing this? I don't know how old are you, but I even started before you were born. And I have experience. The sea today is not good for fishing. And I was ready to go home. But at your word, How many people? How many people? 
in their conception of experience of the past can hear just one word. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just one word can recalibrate or change and focus. They are focused on what they knew. With a new revelation they are receiving now. If what you are receiving now cannot change you from your past, your future is not guaranteed. But we have to come to a point when we hear God speaking to you, no matter what we have been going through, we have to let it go. We have to let it go. It's not a time to begin to say, can I tell you my story? (laughs) Did you know where I come from? No, no, no. Before even you convince me to do anything, let me tell you my story. The reason why I am what I am today, then you understand where I'm coming from. Then you will leave me alone. But Peter, get a new configuration and say, but at your word. I will go and I will lay down the net. And that is what he did. In a period of one second, the Bible said the net was full. Was full. Even they, they, was no, they, they don't even have a space to contain the product of the miracle of Jesus. Yes. Which means that Peter was not prepared for the harvest. <laughs> he had no space for the harvest. He could have kept some fish in the boat, but because of lack of space, He was not able to contain the harvest. But God wants us to prepare for the harvest. Therefore, there is a necessity to build and to enhance the sanctuary of God. To create a space. To create an environment when the loss, when those who have been destroyed by the enemies, when they find their way to come to the, back to their father's house, they can find space to, to, set, to, to rest. So, if we are talking about the harvest, we will move and shift and talk about the sanctuary. If we are talking about the sanctuary, Let's understand this. Sanctuary from the, uh, this context or literally just mean a place of holiness or a place of refuge or a place of protection or a place of asylum. Or a stronghold of security. Which means that once I step my feet in that locality, I'm safe. Just like America. The day I step my feet into this land, I feel secure. Nobody can touch me. No. And I do remember Apostle say, the devil is coming after Pastor Ido, but we step in and say no. Yeah. Once he said no, 
the devil hear that. He can't touch me anymore. Because if you touch me, you are dealing with the whole army. Yes. Yeah. 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 Amen. Don't try because if you do, you are creating problem for yourself. <laughs> the whole army will stand against you. Your life will be miserable forever. Because you are touching untouchable. Yes. Yes. That is the secret of my confidence. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So this is the place that God wants us to enhance. This is the place that God wants us to upgrade the level of life of that dimension. Because people are coming and people want to feel secure. People want to, people want to be in a place where they can even say, oh, what a restful place. People are looking for a place where they can just feel like I'm so secure. Yeah, I'm so secure. <laughs> Even in the Old Testament, this is what God said to Joshua. Joshua chapter 20, verse 1 to 9. Joshua chapter 20. Verse 1 to 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the Israelites to design the city of refuge. Tell the children of Israel to design the city of refuge as I instructed you through Moses so that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there and find protection from the average of blood. Hmm. Even in the Old Testament, the mind, the heart of God is for him to create in the midst of his nation a place of stronghold of protection that the people who are not among you who by mistakenly offend or break the law and the world will be looking, looking to kill them Create a space for them yeah. and protect them. Yeah. Which means that the only solution of the world is the church. Yes. The church had to be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. That we are the solution. And second, we have to see the picture of the greatest protection we have as the body of Christ when we call ourselves Son of God. Which means... Yes. That our security yes. is guaranteed. Now my question is, did you really know the quality of your spiritual environment? Mm -hmm. And why are you afraid again? Do you really realize how much more your life is under the monitoring of God 24 hours on 7. Therefore, God gave that instruction to Joshua and said, design 
use the word design. Which means that the, 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 I mean, the sanctuary of the place of protection has to have a kind of design, a blueprint that God himself gave. How does it look like? What is going to be the conception, the architecture of that place? How does it going to look like? Because the design of the place will speak about himself. How secure is the place? I think in America, the most secure place in America uh, here in the army is the uh, Pentagon. Am I calling right? Yeah. Pentagon. It's a place you can, you cannot just penetrate like that. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> no. The outside look very simple. But when you go inside, <laughs> God wants to build a sanctuary with a kind of design that can represent the image of heaven on the earth. When the people come inside, they can feel like they are in heaven. Remember, when you are talking about the, uh, the sanctuary in this context, we are not talking about our external architecture or infrastructure. We are talking about the inside, which is we. Because when the people who are living the world coming to the church, they are not coming to the building. They are coming to you. And when they come into the house, the first thing that they want to look for is, how better are you than me? They will not come and look, oh wow, look at the kind of car they are driving. I'm so impressed. That is not their problem. But their problem is, when I came in here, ah, who is Minister Christian? <laughs> the first thing that they will do, they will put their zoom on us. <laughs> Let me see the type of person you are. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And see if I'm secure with you. That's right. They are not coming to be impressed by our, our musical group and they say, wow, the way they are singing, I'm telling you, the power of God just hit me, boom. They will say, thank you for the wonderful service. But the second thing that they will do, who is that God preaching there? So they will begin to scan me and zoom me. If I'm not better than them, they will find their way out. They will say to their heart, I'm not secure here. Let me go back home. Therefore, I need to enhance me as a sanctuary. I need to upgrade myself. I need to upgrade my life. I need to upgrade my character. I need to upgrade my love for them. I need to upgrade my spiritual life. I need to upgrade my prayer life to be able to embrace them. That's the only way I can be, get ready for the harvest. I need to go back and create a bigger space in my boat. So if we are talking about the enhancement of the sanctuary, we are talking about three different dimensions. Of application. Number one. Personal practical life. Number two. Community practical life. Number three. Family and social practical life. I 
I will just drop the way it is today, but in the weekly activities, Wednesday, I will be able to develop uh, the deep of this, what I'm saying today. So Wednesday, please don't miss it. And by the way, don't come alone. The sanctuary, personal practical life, number one, the shift of personality, the shift of personality. When God is talking about the sanctuary, and we all agree that we are the sanctuary of God, what God wants to see in us is, we had to bring a kind of shift in our personality. That's what we are calling recalibration. We had to embrace our personal transformation and maturity. Anything in us, everything in us must have upgrades. We need to reject this mentality in us that, oh, I have already arrived. And you begin to count the number of your Christian life. And say, I'm a man, a leader with capacity of 30 years of experience. And the devil will say, here we go. That's your downfall. Exactly. We have to count our year of experience with Christ times zero. <laughs> and say to yourself, I'm a new beginner. To the new position. A strong emphasis on a personal transformation and the requirement of spiritual growth and maturity of all the saints is very important this time. While we are allowing God to transform our inside, we are allowing God to be a person with that anger and people who refuse to take offense. Because the people who are coming can easily offend you. They don't have your education. They don't have your lifestyle. They don't have anything. It's easy to love people like just you. The people who are looking like you, you can easily love them. You can easily embrace them. The people with the same Holy Ghost, speaking the same tongues, with the way you do, you can easily embrace them. But the people who are smelling the sin of the world, you have to be mature to embrace them. And tell them, no matter who you are, I love you. Yes. They can offend you 17 times. You will still say, I love you. They can step on you. You can still say, I love you. When they leave your house, God wants to see you on your knees. And say, Father, I need him in the kingdom. I embrace him in my life. I want him to be here. Don't allow him to go. The hands of the enemies will not touch him. Please, Father, give it to me. When God sees that heart and that kind of personality in you, If you still feeling this man that is not feeling like you, it's not talking like you do, it doesn't have the same education, and you think that his place is not here in the kingdom, that's where you have a problem with God. You are not ready. Right. 
the shift of our personality. We have to go through the quarry system where we need God to enhance us, polish our life, so that when we embrace somebody, nothing will be coming out of us and touch the person and say, like rejection. We need to accept him the way he is. In another word, you have to love yourself first to be able to love somebody. You have to forgive yourself first before you can forgive somebody. People are not coming to observe our beautiful infrastructure here. They want to see who is ECC. Second, flee the position of opposition. Flee the position. The position of opposition. Flee that position. Don't be a kind of person that opposes to anything that God is doing to you. To oppose means to stand between what God wants to accomplish in this time. To oppose me, refuse to align yourself. To oppose me, refuse to listen to instruction. How the house will look at, look at or the people will look at them so when they come here and they feel like you as a member for 20 years you still have a spirit of opposition. How are they going to feel when they feel in you that you still have the faith of 20 years? How are they going to feel when they know that you are not aligned? They are saying something and you are doing your own thing. How are they going to feel? That's what God wants us to enhance, change, transform, work on, get ourselves ready, our heart ready, and say, God, we are ready for you. We are just ready for you. When the people come and they see how your ability to, your ability to follow instruction, when they say, let us go left, Everybody's left. Let us go right. No question. Everybody's on the right. And they will say, no. I have no obligation. I have to follow the frequencies of the house. How are they going to feel when you say the church starts 10 o'clock? Be here 10 and you are here 10, 25. How are they going to feel? How are they going to feel? When they come to church before you, how are they going to feel? How are they going to feel when they say, I'm going to church and you call them and say, I'm tired today, I cannot make it. How are they going to feel? Yes, sir. How are they going to feel when they see that our engagement is not accurate? How are they going to feel? Therefore, God said, prepare the sanctuary for the harvest. The source of our opposition can be proud, lack of submission, murmuring, ignorance, lack of the, lack of the revelation of God. Those can be a source of our opposition. Because if you cannot see, it's going to be difficult for you to align yourself. If you cannot understand what God is doing, it's like, I'm, I, have, I have no clue. No. You have no direction. I 
how they're going to feel. God can never do anything unless somebody is ready and standing with God. Therefore, God wants every individual, each of us to know how is it functioning on the earth in this season. Uh, what did you want? You have to know that. You have to catch that frequency. In another word, you are no part of organization just to be a member of that organization. That's right. Remember, we are no more going to church. We are the church. I am the church. I have the responsibility to become what God wants me to be. And the only person that can destroy the purposes of God on the earth is me. Because when I say no, God will not force me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. Sean, can you read for us? Give me the microphone, please. Ah, you see, your voice and the microphone, they are not working together. <laughs> Yes, when you say like this, your hands say, I agree, but your voice say, no, I can't recognize your voice. You have to synchronize yourself with me. In the, there we go. Okay. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon I lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. <laughs> then said I, Woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord. Hmm. Come to it. Flew one of the seraphim, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken the tongs of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. 
Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Mm. Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. The year the king, Uziah, died. King Uziah represent. First of all, he's the uncle to <clears throat> prophet Isaiah. And he was serving God under him. But yet, something happened. He have no clue about the things of God in the spirit. Because there is something that become a blockage over his life. And remember, before God will start doing something new, God always likes to prepare a man before he can activate into a new dimension. God can never operate until Uziah die. And Uziah represents any system that doesn't represent God but look like God. In another way, it's a religious position that killed the church. When God declared a new season and the old is obsolete, people had to understand that this is a new time. God killed Uziah and said, now Isaiah, raise up. What is uh, Uziah represent in our life is any carnality that holds us back to not represent God accurately in this season. It's in our blood. Every day that we wake up and say, God, I want to, I want to represent you. I want to do your will. That flesh is still say, no, you can't. But it's a sin, this is God. God wants to put mortality over that for the spirit of God to raise up in us. The day Uziah died, I saw the Lord. And when I saw God, he quickly identified his present condition of life. You can never move ahead unless you discover your present condition of life. He was already a prophet. Functioning in a prophetic office. But the day he saw God. Don't allow your gift and your position in the things of God blind you about your really condition of life. Because here is not about who he is. He said, God, this is my condition. Listen to how he say he talk about himself. He said, When I saw God, and then, and then they were calling, uh, calling to one another, Holy, Holy is the Lord. And the sound of their voice, the, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temp shook the temple and was filled with the smoke. Way to me, I cried, I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among the people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the mighty God. We go back from the beginning. When you see him. The perception of God normally has to give us the real identity of our present condition. For we to be able to shift from that position to another. He say, I'm done. Is that my condition? Is that the person I am before I'm operation before you? 
then he knew that it's a time to upgrade myself. It's a time of shifting. It's a time to give a new personality of yourself because you are being designed to do a new assignment. You are not wrong. Nothing wrong with you. Everything is perfect. But when God calls you to a new assignment, he always requires a new upgrade. It's not condemning you, but it's just want to tell you a new assignment with a new man. The harvest that is about to come requires a new century. Something must change. Something new has to appear. You have to feel it as a yes. I'm shifting, I'm moving to a new position. Yes, I'm feeling myself different. I, I live and will behave me Uziah, with every carnality. Now I'm engaged. And God sent the angel and come and touch him. And say, I purify your lift. You are pure, man. When God declare anything pure, is pure indeed. Only God that can change anything that has been become obsolete. Only Him. Wow. But if you cannot shift, you will try to manufacture the movement of God and the presence of God in your life. There will be a struggle to do what God wants you to do. And finally, this is the voice that stay, has been sent from heaven. Then I heard a voice. Number one, he saw. Second, he said, I heard a voice. Saying this, who shall I send? Who shall I send for the harvest? Who will go for us? Who is that sanctuary that can represent me and say, here I am to represent God and bring you hope? Who will stand in the gap of the people and say, God, we need them, embrace them? Who will stand outside with accurate voice and boldness and say, come home, your father needs you? Who will go and tell them what God wants them to hear? Who can we send? Who is ready for us? And the man that God changed and clean, stand with boldness and say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Hmm, church. Can you hear a sound of the voice of God this morning? Yes. Hearing, sounding in your heart and say, who can I send? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Did your inside is sounding like I'm ready for you? Can God count on us? Can God trust us? Can he? Can we say, here I am? Is there anything that holding us back again? Not to be a sanctuary and to say, send me Lord. Is there anything that holding you back? Remember, was just dead. God declared that die because He won Isaiah generation, the prophetic people, to raise up. How 
are you feeling to that announcement this morning? What is your position right now? What type of sanctuary are you today? Okay, God is giving us time to enhance that. Jump into the process and allow him to touch you as he did to Zion. And surrender yourself and engage yourself and say, here I am, Lord. Use me. If God cannot use me, I'm useless. My cry every day is, God, don't put me in garage. And say, this car, I cannot use it anymore because he said, it's giving me trouble. The day the owner of the car who parked that car in garage is only good to be sold and told and to be destroyed. Are you ready to be put in garage? No. I want to be on the road for God. I want him to use me. What are we doing? Stay in comfort zone. Enjoy our life. Getting our money. Enjoy our vacation. Something needs to be done on the earth. <coughs> Through you or me. Prepare for the harvest. Prepare for the harvest. I always say this. If it is not we, then who? And if it is not now, then when? Engage yourself. Allow God to upgrade you in every domain. Sometimes it's painful. Accept it. What a privilege for which to be used by the king of kings on the earth. What a privilege for me to be an instrument that God can use on the earth. Are you ready? Today, I can see the angel of the Lord in the house. Getting ready to purify our mind and our thought. Yes. Sanctify us. And put a new garment on us. Give us a new name. Yes. For we to function on the earth as a new body. To embrace and engage the body of Christ and the loss and bring them back home. God is counting on you to do that. Can you step into that engagement and say, here I am, O oh Lord. Let me see you and allow me to engage. Not only emotional engage, my total life to be engaged in you. If that is your prayer, come forward, let's cry to God. Step forward, let's, come to, let's cry to God. And ask him, Father, position our life. Change us. Give us a new ability. Yes, yes, yes. Help me to function differently. Yes, 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 yes. If you are a leader, help me to be a different leader. Yes. Anything that you are connected with, God, give me grace. Upgrade me. Yes. Make me to become a new man. On the earth. Step forward if you can't. I will see you. Thank you, Father. It's a day of a new engagement with God. We just want to engage ourselves back 
It's a day we remember and say, this day the Lord touched our life. This day the Lord started new thing in our life. This day I engage myself to the process of the harvest. This day something new starts. This day I embrace. This day I saw the Lord. And I say, when he said, who will go for us? And I say with boldness, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Change me. Here I am. Reconfigurate me. Here I am. Recalibrate my life. Here I am. Here I am. Whenever in your heart begin to talk to God today, talk to him. I saw a wind start blowing and he's taking every individual person to his different direction, different assignment. And the Lord said, I'm going to release everybody into his assignment. It's a day of a new beginning. It's a day of a new beginning. See you say, God, I'm tired. And he say, I am your strength. I heard you say, God, I'm tired. And he say, I am your strength. I am your strength. There is a strong visitation right here. Nobody will touch you, but you're going to have encounter with God. Something is going to penetrate your life. A new thing, a new thing, and something new is going to come. He's going to touch you in a new way. Whatever is your heart, in your heart, empty it before the Lord. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Santa 
I see God releasing the power of activation. There is a power of activation. There is a power of activation. I saw something begin to move as the sound of aging. And the Lord is saying, I'm activating something new. I'm breaking any things that stuck in one place. And something. We heard the word today. We can stay in the same place. We can stay in the same place. Yes, yes, yes. You have always given a shift. Yes. Now shift us. Move us. Move us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Us. Not the same old, same old anymore. Not the same. Not the same place anymore. No more the same place. Move us, Move Lord. Us. Move us, Lord. Shift us, Lord. Shift us. Change us, Lord. Change we us. surrender to you, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. We say yes to you, Lord. Yes, we say yes to you. Yes, yes, we yes, say yes. Yes, yes. We say yes. From we the core yes. of our souls, we say yes. We say yes. yes. We say yes. We will not stay in this place. We say yes. But we move to Canaan. We move to that new place. We say yes. That new dimension because of what you are doing in this place today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
sins forgiven, shortcomings overcome. In the name of Jesus, no more guilt, no more sorrow, no more fear, no more hindrance. We say yes to you today. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Lord, even those places of unforgiveness, we thank you today that we can forgive and that we are forgiven today. We surrender everything to you. We will not be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God anymore. We surrender our hearts to you. We say yes. People of God, say yes. Yes. From the bottom of your heart, say yes. 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 Come on, come on, yes, yes, right now, win. right now, right now, break yes, it, Lord, win. Yes, break it, Lord, every we'll hindrance, yes, break it, Lord, every chain, we'll break yes, it, Lord, ah, we'll uh, yes, the bondage Lord. has to go, we'll break yes. it in Jesus' name, yes, we'll yes. Yes. in Jesus' name. Yes, we'll Bring this congregation to a new place. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord. A place where we're totally dependent upon you. Where we are radically dependent upon you. You and only you. Where we hear your voice clearly. Where we see you clearly. And we walk in your ways. Oh, God. Calibrate your character in us, Lord God. How we speak how we live, how we think. Everything in us says yes. Say yes. Yes. Say it again. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we count it done. New day. New season. New walk. New talk. New thoughts. New anointing. New everything. Because we say yes. Jesus, dear name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless him. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless him. It is so. It is so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I still on. Um, remember, Wednesday we're going to go deep to the sanctuary and how God is preparing us as a sanctuary. So, whenever it's happening Wednesday, destroy that program and engage yourself on Wednesday. I want the whole place to be filled. And remember, don't come alone. Bring your husband, bring your wife, bring your children, and bring your friend. Amen. So I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Let's put those hands together. Give God a praise for that word, for that move of God. Amen. It is time to give. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. It is time to give. We're not taking a break in the service. We're worshiping God in our gifts and our giving. Leviticus 27 and 30 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy. Somebody say holy. It is holy. Somebody say holy unto the Lord. Pastor Edo has challenged you to move to a new spot. Amen. That's even in your giving. Amen. He said, are you ready for the harvest? Remember I told you several weeks ago, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there cannot be room enough to receive. Amen. If you need an envelope, would you please hold your hand up?
as we can serve you. Ushers, if you would move this way with the baskets. Amen. We're going to ask you to walk on today's. Is that all right? Amen. We've got the tall basket for the, the uh, Victoria Dunn Scholarship Fund, the benevolence box. Would you stand on this side, sister? Amen. As we get prepared to bring our gifts to the altar and give unto the Lord as he has prospered us. Amen. Won't you lift that gift to the Lord and wave it and tell God, thank you. Oh, come on, y'all mighty weak. God has been good. Wave that gift and tell God, thank you. Eternal God, our Father, we come now. God, we come to share back a portion of that that you've blessed us with. We pray, oh God, that you would now bless both gift and giver. Bless us according to our needs and according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. We're going to ask the two wings to stand. We want this side to face the wall, that side to face the windows, and come from the rear bringing your gifts to the altar. Won't you come bringing your gifts to the altar? The two wings are standing, coming from the rear. Please remember the Victoria Dunn and the Benevolence. Amen. Center section, if you would stand and move to my left and come this way. Center section, if you would stand and move to my left and come this way. Amen. opportunity to give. We thank God for your gift and your giving. Amen. We would ask that all visitors would stand at this time. Do we have any visitors with us today? All visitors, would you please stand? Amen. Amen. Come on, Clippers. Would you give us your name and what church you're from and who invited you? Amen, amen. On behalf of Apostle and Eric, Warren, Eric and Carolyn Warren, and also the Board of Elders and Ministers, and all the saints here at Equippers, we would like to welcome you. We hope that you've enjoyed your worship experience here at Equippers. Equippers, come on and show her some love. Amen. Come on and show her some love. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Edo has already asked you to be here on Wednesday for the midweek fellowship where he will be able to go in deeper depth on the message that he gave on today. So at 7 o'clock, we would ask you to come and meet us here at 7. Please invite or bring a friend and come and feast on what the Lord has for you at the midweek fellowship. Amen. All those who are streaming with us, we want to welcome you today. And you can also participate in the giving and donate, push the donate button if you want to be a blessing to this ministry. We would love to have your gifts as a support to our ministry and allow us to continue to reach out to you through our streaming process. Amen. We would also ask that you would subscribe to the Equipper City Church YouTube channel. We are here to equip and we have been given a mandate to equip you to be able to do everything that God has blessed you to do. So if you would just follow us also on Facebook and visit our website at www.equippercitychurch.com where you can get some inspirational messages and be able to see what we're doing here in the city. Amen. Men of Adula. Amen. Attention all males, young and old, seasoned and unseasoned. You are invited to attend the Wild at Heart, 
a band of brothers. It is a group video series and book discussion on Thursday, May 3rd, here at Equippers at 7 p.m. If you want any more information, please see Minister Leveland and get more information. But we're looking for you here on Thursday at 7. The battle is won from within. And Minister Leveland said he will see you on Thursday night. All graduate seniors, do you have any graduating seniors in the house? Amen. Well, if you have a graduating senior or you know of one, we would invite you to learn about this year's Victoria L. Dunn scholarship process. There will be a, meet uh, there will be a meeting immediately following the service today in the media training room for all high school seniors where we will review the scholarship requirements and distribute the applications. So if you have, if you're a parent or grandparent, you have a graduating senior this year and you want more information on the scholarship fund, we would ask that you would meet in the uh, training room to get more information. And then we have the Victoria L. Dunn Rest and Relax Challenge for April. Amen. I must have missed that one because I have not been resting this month. <laughs> so we would ask that you would take that well we got a couple of more days to get your rest in how are you resting how much sleep are you getting each night proper rest can literally add years to your life and so we're asking you to take that into mind into consideration and be able to do what you need to do to keep these bodies fit so that you could be useful in the kingdom of God First Sunday Fiesta. Amen. It is that time again where you could join us for Fiesta First Sunday here at ECC, which will include which will be scheduled for next Sunday, May 6th. We are continuing to walk in the pillars of a apostolic community, fellowshipping and breaking bread with one another. The theme for this meal is Mexican. Amen. So we are encouraging you to make your favorite Mexican dishes and or contribute to items for the taco bar. Please sign up and bring a dish at the welcome table after service. So you can stop at the table, sign up to let them know what you're going to bring, what you're going to contribute so that they will know and be able to prepare adequately for next Sunday's Fiesta Sunday. The VLD 5K Walk and Run. Amen. Equip you family, please mark your calendars for Saturday, May the 26th at 10 a.m. We will be hosting our first VLD 5K Walk and Run. The location is to be determined, but it will be fun. Family event with prizes, games, and plenty of exercise. Ugh. Plenty of exercise for the whole family. We hope you invite your friends and family to come and move with us. For more information, we would ask you to see Sister Ruth McNeil. Wave your hand, Sister Ruth, so they can see who you are. See Sister Ruth McNeil for more information. If you're in need of prayer, again, we have our listening room to my right, where you can go and an elder or intercessor will meet you and petition God for your needs and for your desires and touch and agree with you that God will move in your behalf. And we would also ask you to remember all deadlines for announcements and media requests must be received no later than Friday at 5 p.m. And we would thank you for your cooperation in that area. At this time, we have uh, several verbal announcements. First will be Elder uh, Brina Means. She will come with an announcement following her sister Chiquita Torre. And then following her, Brother Randy Campbell. If you will come in that order, please, and give your announcements at this time. Amen. Thank you, uh, Minister Kendricks. I, I really don't need this. Are you guys, like, like, just really, like, overflowing right now because of the word this morning? I mean, just, like, really, like, really, like, in there. I mean, really shifting inside and outside and really ready to get on board and partner with everything that we do in the house. 
Amen. Well, the first thing, I want, I'm going to just take 30 seconds and back up a little bit. That VLD 5K run, I didn't hear a whole lot of excitement about that. Okay, Ruth, help. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's part of calibration. That's part of us coming together on one accord, doing the things in the house and outside the house. There, that's also a great opportunity for outreach. So, amen. We're going to run 5, 10, 15 Ks, whatever it takes for us to get there. I am actually here to talk to you about Apostle Warren's latest book. How many of you have been reading Character, The Path That God Walks? Okay, I'm just being turned upside down, inside out, and everything else. And so, I want you all to join us here in this house. The date change for our book study is going to be April. We're going to be starting April 23rd. Instead of, I'm sorry, May, May 23rd. I told you I was excited about the word. Give Elder Brina a break here. We're going to be starting May 23rd instead of the 16th, which was the announcement I gave a few weeks ago. Why? Because on the 20th, we're going to have a special, uh, special session, and we'll just let you be surprised about that. That will, that will really prepare us for it. So starting May 23rd, that is going to be the beginning of our book study here in the house. Now, if you think about some of the things that Elder Edo said today and some of the things that everyone's been saying in midweek and here from this platform, it's all about coming together and get ready for the harvest. It's all about recalibration of ourselves so we can help the world recalibrate. And one of the greatest things we can do right now is come together on one accord, one voice, one sound. And I know you're studying at home, but let's study this book out together. And we're thinking about a three to four month process. We don't have an end date. We'll get an end date. We're not going to go on forever. But we're not going to fly through it either. We're going to take our time. Why are we going to do that? Because we really want to get it. Also, we don't want you to just come and study for yourself. We're asking that everyone else, if you have not already done so, buy an extra book and bring someone with you. Buy an extra book and bring someone with you. It's all about leading, building, and drawing. We can lead by bringing someone with us. We can build by making sure that they're here with us studying the book. And we can draw by making sure they're with us here studying the book. So can we get excited for what's to come in midweek? So he's already prompted you. Make sure you're here next week. Make sure you're here the week after and the week after. We got some fun things that are in the making for the character book study. Amen? Amen. I'm going to bring up Sister Shakita now. She has a quick announcement. Then we have just one more. Come on, Shakita, give her a hand. Thank you, Elder Brina. How's everyone? I had to speak from the back. I'm working with the young ones. But um, I, w I actually have one quick announcement and a special presentation. I do want you to know, ladies, that it's 19 days we're away from part three of the One Word Shift. So many of you received that in your Facebook, so, and you said you were coming, so I want to hold you to that. So Apostle Carolyn has been working on some really wonderful things for you, and part of that is communicating how to be an influencer and how to take that one word to the next level. So please make sure you mark your calendars for that. Um, I also have a special presentation by my daughter, Amina. Uh, many of you know that uh, the young people should know that April is actually National Poetry Month. And so she has a special presentation, and it is a poem by someone very special who is among us. And we have a list of just a compilation of all of her poems, but I thought this was timely. So I'll let you have it, Amina. It's time by Mother Rosa Williams. It's time to saturate our homes with prayer. It's time to use our time wisely in the Lord. It's time to let God lead and direct us. It's time to say what God would have us to say. It's time to go where God would have us to go. It's time to walk in the Spirit. It's time to talk the way God says to talk. It's time for us to love with the love of God that covers. It's time to obey God and not man. It's time to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. It's time to pray always effectually and fervently. It's time to look up unto the hills from where our help cometh. It's time to encourage one another. It's time to keep our minds stayed on the, the Lord. It's time to commit our ways unto the Lord. It's time to praise the Lord as never before. It's time to bless the Lord with all that is within us. 
It's time to build one another up and build ourselves up into the most holy faith. It's time to live holy. It's time to trust the Lord with all our hearts and learn not unto our own understanding. It's time, it's time, it's time. Thank you so much. And again, that's our own. Can we give Mother Rosa Williams? Thank you so much. We love you. Good afternoon. Most of you guys know that I absolutely hate public speaking, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to get through this. Um, I am Randy Campbell. Most of you guys know me. Some of you know me as Elder Marla's daughter. Um, I wanted to come before you this morning um, to talk to you guys about a cell group that I've been running for the past year. And if you know anything about cell groups, you know for a cell group to go for almost a whole year, that's um, about a year ago, I literally had a dream about starting a cell group for introverts. Um, in my dream, it went as far as to me having titles for sessions and ideas and everything. Um, I woke up, <laughs> tried to go back to sleep, and if you have a dream from God, you know you're not going back to sleep. Um, so I wrote down my entire plan for my cell group. Titles, everything. Um, I went back to sleep and I called my mom the next day and I was laughing, literally cracking up like, mom, about this dream. Yeah, right. I don't public speak. I don't do groups. I don't do any of these things. And I'm laughing. And she's like, hmm, you need to write this up and present it to the apostles. I stopped laughing. <laughs> um, it wasn't funny anymore. Um, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> went back to sleep, continued my dream. Told my mom, and she said, okay, present it. So I was being obedient, and I presented it to the apostles. And I told him about my idea, and I'm like, he's going to be like, Randy, no. <laughs> um, both the apostles were like, yeah, go through with this. Still not laughing anymore at this point. Um, so I said, okay, and left it at that. Um, kept trying to ignore it and not go anywhere with it. This is how God works. The apostles follow up with me about it. My mother follows up with me about it. My sister and the Wilsons. So I'm like, okay. So I did my research. I put it together. I made, well, I didn't make my announcement. Somebody else made my announcement. And from there, this is my group. <laughs> so um, I'm going to... This is the book that we use for our group. We use the book, we use Apostles' Teachings, and we kind of just go from there. Um, I am going to share a little bit of a video, and then I have some questions for you guys, and then I promise I won't take up any more time. What I've Learned from the Introvert Group by Jonathan Camp. Uh, you know the rest. Being a part of this group has been very educational for me, and I can honestly say that I've learned a ton. I've discovered more about myself and the others in this group than I thought possible. In addition to learning more about what it means to be an introvert and utilizing the introvert personality type to serve in the kingdom, I've learned how traits of introverts can actually make them very effective leaders. Through the course of our reading, activities, and discussions, there have been lots of chances for introspection. What did I find, you ask? I have quite a few introvert qualities. See what I did there? I love people, and I'm lucky to get to work with them every day, but they wear me out. I have a tendency, when given the choice, to either be by myself or in a small group, because that is where I'm most comfortable. Realizing these things about myself has allowed me to be more aware of how I feel and the choices I make in social situations. I may not have drastically changed my behavior recently because of this, but it has helped me to be more aware of what I do and the reasons behind it. I think this is a huge first step in becoming a more productive introvert inside and outside of the church. Prior to attending these group meetings and our shared learning, I was under the impression that introversion meant being shy, 
antisocial, possibly socially awkward, and even afraid of other people. Having seen the light now, I know that not all introverts share all these qualities. In fact, there are varying degrees of introversion, and like snowflakes and fingerprints, no two introverts are exactly alike. One of the most beneficial and empowering things that we have learned is that introverts, contrary to popular opinion, have the potential to be excellent leaders. Our tendency to be thoughtful, considerate, deliberate, and objective provide a strong foundation for good decision making and contemplative planning. Being a leader, to me, means being aware of who you are inside and out and then using that knowledge for the betterment of yourself and others. Anyone can be a leader at any time if only they wish to be. So the whole purpose and what we're learning in our group is that it's okay to be an introvert. doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Um, but not to let it hinder you from doing kingdom work. Um, these group, this, this group of people, there's so many hidden talents in this group that a lot of people don't get to witness and see, but I get to see it all the time. So that's what we work on. So I'm kind of going to tease you guys like a session where we do a lesson, and then after our lessons, we always have an activity to follow up with our lessons. Um, they've done things such as painting, they have little challenges, they do such things. Um, and so we are going to play silent bingo, <laughs> um, more so just to kind of let you guys self-process and kind of see where you fall on the spectrum of introvert or extrovert or ambivert and see if this would be a group for you. And actually, this idea, this game, was created by Wendy Spencer. Okay. See, we're going places, y'all. <laughs> okay, so just take some time to kind of self-reflect and, you know, mark your bingo spots if you, mentally, internally, if you, you know, identify with any of these. I have often wondered why people are drawn to me. People make me tired. My natural quietness is motivated by fear or me feeling insecure. I am adorably awkward. I know I have a lot to offer to the kingdom, but being an introvert keeps me from getting involved. So if any of those points resonate with you, please come find me after church, and I would like to, you know, have you come visit us for a session. dismiss it. <laughs> Everyone stand, please. <laughs> Lord God, we thank you for an awesome, awesome day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we internalize everything that has been spoken today and everything that has been shared today, Lord God. And Lord God, just continue to build upon that even as we uh, leave this place, this sanctuary today, Lord God. And so, Father God, I thank you for every person today, and I just give you the glory and the honor for their lives, and we just say thank you, Lord God. Thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're about to do, and where we're going, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>